Hello, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to World of Warships for our Saturday video, being our upgrade in Commander Build video. Today, I'm going to be doing an overview of the Sovetsky Soyuz, a Tier 9 Russian battleship. We'll look at her modules, her upgrades, and Commander, uh, most certainly. So, um, first, what type of ship is the Sovetsky Soyuz? Well, she is a mid range to close range um, fighter, uh, she's not a long range sniper. Um, you have to be very selective about when you are actually fighting up close and personal as really when I'm saying more of that um, mid-range I'm thinking perhaps it's like that 15 to 12 kilometer window um, because the closer you get the more accurate uh, these 406 millimeter oops wrong one 406 millimeter guns become um, you have nine of them as a whole uh, that do decent, but their dispersion is a little lacking, uh, definitely at range. Um, so they become more accurate the closer they get, which you could say about all ships, but it's actually like really notable <laughs> with the Russian battleships uh, more so because they have the Svetsky Soyuz has a 1.7 Sigma. And I'll talk about the, the dispersion values uh, when we get into the uh, upgrades. So in terms of her armor scheme, let's check that out. So she is a tough old girl so looking at the uh the bow plating you got 32 millimeter and then coming back here to your stern also 32 millimeter uh on the deck as well but then the midsection of the ship is 60 millimeter so this really helps um helping deal with you know destroyer he uh, spam uh so you they're gonna get a lot of non pins uh, on the deck unless they're able to hit more accurately on your superstructure which isn't actually really large uh, on the Svetsky Soyuz. Um, so a lot of players, you know, you're often you're this kind of like bowing position like this. So, you know, a lot of your, let's say maybe your bow and particularly your turrets on the frontal plates will take a lot of the heat. Uh, so it's hard for destroyers to land accurate salvos. Let's say, you know, they're being gunboats uh, as an example. But on the front, we need to make mention of this 220 millimeter uh, armor belt, a foreign armor belt. Uh, so that's actually really nice. So it's not people like taking advantage to punch through to hit get to your citadel. Which if I take some things away real quick, you can see that the citadel is actually uh, above water. But there's uh, a good amount of coverage there, which we'll discuss in just a moment. Uh, so you know, like people really know that cheek uh, weakness, for example, on uh, the Yamato or Musashi. Not really here, and much more so, especially when we get back to here. Um, a lot of times you can aim underneath the turrets and get that additional damage. But you may have wondered why it doesn't feel like it works on Sovetsky Soyuz very well. Well, it's because we have this additional armor plating here underneath the front turret is the 420 millimeter, and then to the back mid is 406, and then the standard 309 to 375 uh, that goes along the most the entirety of the ship. So this area is additionally protected. Uh, so it prevents, helps prevent things like that happening. So it can uh, be very difficult to citadel Svetsky Soyez. So really where you're wanting to aim um, is more of the midsection of the ship, um, not underneath uh, the turrets uh, to try to, you know, maybe impossible get a detonation or something. So you can see it's actually a little bit weaker on this spot here. It's the 180 and then goes back down to the 375. Um, so yeah, still very tough, very strong. Let's peel some things away. So that's the 60 millimeter deck, which then goes into a 50 millimeter. And then you have some torpedo bulkhead protection, which is 20 millimeters, so you can see it's uh, pretty light. And then getting into the Citadel armor itself. So 230 millimeter from the front. Down here, part of the torpedo bulkhead, 58 millimeter. So probably more for deep water torps. So you can kind of see this, get this nice coverage um, before you even actually end up getting uh, into the Citadel. So it's quite nice. This ship is strong. You play it, it is the tank. That's what the, really the Russian battleships are most known for, is them being tanks. But let's talk about these uh, turrets. So you have a uh, 495 millimeter on the front, on the sides. So you can see it's actually sloped and even kind of rounded um, a certain spots. So you can see it more from the, the front. Um, 230 millimeter. The back is strong, 410. That's normally that tends to be where the weakest armor plating can be on a gun, or maybe even the top. Um, but it's actually not the case here on this. That's the case. It's uh, 410, then 270 on the top. Uh, so it's actually the sides are the weakest um, on the Svetsky Soyuz. 
but you have this kind of nice upward slant. Um, so it's not a square box. Uh, so the possibility of being able to ricochet um, some shells off uh, the side. So these turrets are really strong. Strong enough that I don't feel it's necessary to take the main, um, uh, was it main armor's modification one, which kind of helps prevent your main turrets being knocked out. Because the entire time that I played the Sovetsky Soyuz, uh, my guns never got knocked out. That at least that I can remember. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go into looking at uh, the modules for the ship. So um, with our build right now, uh, we have a reload time of 29 seconds. This is going to be higher uh, without because of the main battery modification three that I have mounted. Our 180 degree turn time is 28.7 seconds. Uh, I think stock it's 30. Yeah, I've taken that. Um, I had a different commander that was higher skill point level, but I've since moved him off over to the Kremlin. Um, so I'm using a lower point commander as we go over um, the Savetsky uh, Soyuz here. And then your hull A, uh, you see it's 80,900, but when you upgrade it, you go to 88,100. Um, so you can see the A defense actually improves <laughs> notably. Uh, 60 to 74 uh, would be should be our rating here. Um, that's also because I have some flags mounted. Let me pop that off. Uh, 58 to 72. Yeah. So hull A, mm, your your AA is pretty poor. And uh, then the hull B, it gets better and you get that additional heal. In addition to, you can see the maneuverability actually improves because um, this is a rather heavy ship per se, because uh, it has so much armor. Uh, you're not that maneuverable in this story, which is to be expected when playing this Russian battleship line. The gunfire control system, your stock range is 17.6. Um, you get to upgrade that to 19.4 kilometers. So that's very helpful because this is feels more like a, a cruiser range uh, at the higher tiers, as an example. So upgrade the hull first and then do your gunfire control system. And then your propulsion is 28 knots without taking the serial mic flag or brisk if you did take brisk, which uh, I wouldn't recommend here in the Svetsky Soyuz. In terms of the upgrades, uh, I have for now, I have mounted the main armaments modification one. This reduces the risk of your main battery becoming capacitated by negative 20%, main battery survivability plus 50%, and main battery repair time negative 20%. Now I said when I was looking at the turrets, actually, I don't prefer this one. Um, neither do I prefer these two. What I'd actually like to take is the damage control party modification one. If I felt like I was going to be playing the Sovetsky Soyuz a lot, um, maybe I you have a you get the ship and you enjoy playing it. And if you want to invest in the coal to pick up this uh, special upgrade, then I would. This extends your consumable action time of your damage control party by plus 40%. Right now it's only 10 seconds um, with the commander build because we can slightly tweak that a little bit. Um, so then I could bump it up to 14 seconds uh, as an example uh, from where we're at right now. Um, because you're often being focused a lot um, and we'll talk more about this fast damage control team. So I would definitely pick up uh, this special upgrade as I'll show you how much coal it costs. It's 17,000. Uh, you get a coupon. I usually always try to utilize the coupons, which will be coming back as I record this in less than uh, one day. Uh, it takes 25% off. So then it gets you down. It's like 12,500, 12, something like that. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. Um, so you save a significant amount of coal, which I mean, it's helpful when you think like that. So I would actually take that first and foremost. Um, and then do main armaments modification one and your AA sucks, so I don't even bother. And you don't need magazine modification one because the risk of your ship's magazine detonating is reduced by negative 70%. You just take the Juliet Charlie combat signal, uh, which a super container generously gave me a uh, hundred of these recently, which I actually don't mind because of how expensive they are in terms of credits to pick up. For the second slot, you're just going to want to do the damage control system modification one. This is going to reduce your risk of catching fire by negative 5% and risk of flooding by negative 3%. Because let's face it, a lot of people are going to be spamming HE at you rather than AP because it's just going to bounce off and less chances of doing damage unless you're just full on broadside to them. Engine room protection, um, you don't need. I mean, it might be you get a ticket torpedo uh, in the stern and knocks out your steering gears or your engine, but you're. It's not typical because you're more this Bowen um, player. In terms of the 
uh, third slot for the upgrades. I have elected to take the aiming systems modification one because it reduces the uh, main battery shell dispersion uh, of our main battery shell dispersion. Yeah, by negative 7%. So uh, what does this mean? So what this means is um, if I didn't take this, like let's say I took main battery modification two, my maximum horizontal uh, dispersion would be 243 meters. And then my maximum dispersion vertically would be 183 meters. Now, if I took this, uh, it would drop down to from 243 meters to 226 meters, maximum dispersion horizontally. And then vertical dispersion would drop from 183 to 270 meters. So that means you're getting tighter shell groupings. And because this ship uh, it needs it, uh, your sigma is a 1.7 and sigma just means um, the chances of your shells landing in a center of where you're aiming at um, so being able to have a tighter shell grouping helps so i have to take the aiming systems modification one over the main battery modification two because your um your battery traverse speed is 28.7 seconds and most battleships even once you've upgraded it into them often like 30 seconds or something um so this actually works out uh, quite well because of how your main battery 180 degree, 180 degree turn time uh, is not so bad. For the fourth slot, damage control system modification two, this is gonna reduce your fire extinguishing time by negative 15% and your flooding recovery time by negative 15%. Both of these are really helpful, especially while you're waiting for your fast damage control team to come off of cooldown as an example, because um, it takes uh, 38 point eight seconds for it to come off cooldown uh, with what we have running right now. So this is really the clear winner of all these four. Uh, concealment wise, um, we don't have concealment on our commander, but we've taken concealment here. And that brings us down to this 14.6. Uh, your ship's detectability range, negative 10%. Squadron detectability range, negative 10%. Dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking your ship, plus 5%. So it means they're getting a slightly worse dispersion when they fire on your ship. Um, and you can see by air, it's 12 kilometer by air. And uh, this helps when you do need to try to end up disengaging, especially once you've gone for a full concealed build, which we'll talk about. Because um, torpedo lookout system, you're not avoiding any torpedoes. You're not maneuverable at all. And this is kind of pointless in my opinion. You also have shift consumables modification one. Uh, this extends your action time by plus 10%. So then you just have some longer lasting uh, fast damage control team uh, repair party. Um, but you're not a consumable based ship. Um, so for me, this the consumer system modification one makes the most sense. Third slot, you only have two options. Uh, you have the main battery modification three. This reduces your main battery reload time by negative 12%. And then your main battery traverse speed, negative 13%. So we've taken a nerf in terms of our 108 degree turret uh, traverse time, uh, but we've taken grease to gears on our commander to help make up for that. Still keeping us underneath the 30, that 28.7. Uh, and then we're getting the faster reload uh, times. So 29 seconds versus, uh, I can't remember if socks like 31 or something like that. Um, so that's nice. And then once you started adding adrenaline rush, um, then you're dropping down to 28.5, 28, 27.5 second type uh, reload time as you lose health off of your ship. Auxiliary Armist Modification 2 doesn't really make sense because of it being uh, secondary and AA based, which both of which are very poor in this ship. Um, and only once you get to the hull B do your A, does your A actually become okay, because being tier 9 means you're going to see, uh, I mean, yeah, you can see tier 8 CVs, but uh, it's Svetsky sort of struggles against tier 8 CVs. Uh, you get uh, dumpstered on by tier 10 CVs, and you get extra dumpstered on by super carriers. So. Um, just, uh, just dodge, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, that's what Wargaming tells us. Uh, in terms of armaments, uh, so your uh, HG cells, your high explosive shells, 5,800 maximum shell damage, 40% uh, chance of causing fire on target, which actually is not too bad. And you can see uh, penetration capacity, 68 millimeters. Your AP goes up to 13,250 maximum damage uh, with the... Yeah, initial shell velocity of 830 meters a second, which is the same as your high explosive shells. Depth charge airstrike, which you saw me use profusely to kill a submarine that only had 43 HP left in yesterday's battle. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. That was a good game, um, but uh, unfortunate how it ended. Um, depth charge airstrike, 
uh, you have a 10 kilometer uh, number of aircraft attacking flight one, and then you get two flights and two bombs per payload. Uh, so two bombs per each flight. So um, this is helpful. It's nice that it's actually 10 kilometers, not like eight kilometers or something less, because it minimally, in my opinion, need, needs to be the 10 kilometers. So uh, good for wargaming on that. In terms of consumables, you have the fast damage control team. Um, this has a high reload speed, but the, uh, the, the cost of uh, being a limited number of charges. Uh, so we only get four, where, you know, other battleships, other, most battleships in the game have is the standard damage control team. So the fast damage control team is nice in the sense that you have a very quick reload time of 38.8 seconds. But um, your action time is, takes a big hit. Uh, so 10 seconds. So that's why I talk about extending that out with the damage control uh, party modification one. If you're grinding up this line and you have plenty of coal, then definitely pick this up and go ahead and put it on Sovetsky Soyuz. Um, because the reality of how strongly armored and then the side angle sloping of your main battery, uh, reality is it's going to be very rarely ever that your main armor gets knocked out. It's not impossible, but it's just very rarely. Uh, where the fast damage control team, if you build into it, will help give you uh, a lot. Uh, so it's just really good. Uh, it's one of the notable items too, besides the tankiness and the armor of this line. It means you can be, you know, in these balance situations, dealing with a lot of HE spam, um, tanking a lot of damage, having high potential damage numbers of 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, um, and kind of being that anchor for your team. That's kind of, I think, how I think of uh, especially once I've gone into Svetsky Soyuz and uh, I've had only one battle in Kremlin so far. Um, but these uh, tanks, because I've had Lenin. I love playing Lenin, tier 8 premium Russian battleship. Uh, so you kind of feel like an anchor, and it's very hard for an enemy team to dislodge you because of your really strong armor, and that you have these fast damage control teams. Repair party-wise, um, you have HP per second of plus 440. We can bump that up with India Delta 528, which I do recommend you doing. You can see action time of 28 seconds, reload time of 77.6 seconds. And then you only get option to fighter, so not spotters. You only get three of these. Um, I had a CV uh, fly over me uh, recently when I was playing the Svetsky Soyuz. Uh, he, he flew, it was a Kaga, he flew right over my stern of my ship and he attacked a Marco Polo behind me to my right. And my fighters never engaged. And he like literally flew almost right over me to drop torps uh, on the other, my friendly battleship. So. I mean, if you, especially when you're in these battling positions, it will discourage some CV players from attacking you if you see them coming and you pop this early enough. So you might prevent the second strike essentially uh, with fighters if your fighters do decide to dis, uh, engage the enemy uh, attack aircraft. So um, other things to note here, uh, I would actually recommend picking up the November Foxtrot. Uh, ship consumables, preparation, and reload time. Uh, it's going to drop this down. Your reload time is 73.7 seconds. And then your reload time of your fast damage control team even farther, 36.9 seconds. Uh, so quite nice uh, for this tank. You want to reduce your fire extinguishing time, or I guess increase it where the fires aren't lasting as long, as well as your flooding recovery time if you were to get a flood. You want to take a ram flag, um, cause damage caused by ramming an enemy plus 50%, damage received when ramming an enemy, negative 20%. So sometimes you can ram enemy ships and survive the encounter if they themselves don't have the hotel Yankee combat signal. So do pick that up. You saw that I had the November Echo set 7, which bumps our AA rating up to 74. Uh, I just do that because really the ship needs to help. And I mean, once I get to uh, these six combat signals i'm like what else am i gonna take uh so i do that and then i usually just play with these seven um because i have enough of these for now so in terms of the commander as we switch over here uh so there's some uh, special commanders that you can run uh seasoned commanders that might have uh, different enhanced skills that's kind of the story of the commander i have on the kremlin right now uh so for your first point skill i recommend picking up the emergency repair specialist um, damage control, party consumable, negative 3% cooldown time. Repair party consumable, uh, cooldown time, negative 3%. So actually, when we were over here, I, I noticed this, but I had to check. Um, the reload time without that skill would be 40 seconds. And then without it, here it would be 80 seconds. Uh, so I've already uh, reduced uh, the reload time of both of these, which is actually uh, quite nice. 
Uh, so then being able to do that further with November Foxtrot Combat Signal uh, makes it uh, all the more better. So I do really recommend picking uh, this up uh, because you're really not going to be switching your shells too much unless you know, you've know you dealt with the cruisers and battleships and then you want to switch to high explosive to deal with that submarine or enemy destroyer player. So uh, do this for the first point. For the second uh, uh, three point commander, I'd recommend doing Grease the Gears. Uh, this improves your main battery traverse speed by plus 20% and this keeps us under that 30 seconds, 180 degree turn time at 28.7 seconds. So uh, that's very helpful. Um, so even as much armor as these turrets have, Wargaming kind of made one of the um, notable items is actually the 180 degree turn time. It's actually quite decent with these Russian battleships. So interesting, but you know, each ship has its uh, line, has its kind of own things in the game. For a six point commander, take a drill and rush. Main battery reload time is uh, gets reduced as well as your airstrike armament, your secondary battery reload time. And you get slight buff on your continuous AA damage for each 1% of health pool lost. So that means your reload time can drop down to 28 or 27 seconds as an example. For a 10 point skill, um, if for a 10 point commander, this is what I would do as you see reflected here on the screen. Fire provision expert. Uh, reduces the risk of catching fire by negative 10%. And then you can only have a maximum number of fires of three on your ship versus four without the skill. So to just show you that really quick, if you're not so sure what fire prevention is, this is your new player to the game. Uh, without fire prevention, I would have a fire here on my bow, one on my stern, and two on the superstructure. Uh, fire prevention, rather than it saying, oh, two fires are going to tick, causing a lot of damage to your ship, uh, only one fire is permitted on your superstructure. Um, so, and a lot of people are going to be focusing your superstructure um, in the Sovetsky Soyuz because of your armor scheme. Um, it's really the only place they can get any damage from. So um, if you don't take fire prevention, you're just really asking for it um, because a lot of people are, are going to be additionally focusing your superstructure anyhow just because of how tanky you are. So you really want to run that. And that's why I've elected to do that uh, for a 10-point uh, commander build. Now, for a 14-point commander build, I'd then recommend you to take the emergency repair expert. Uh, this has your damage control party consumable action time plus 10%. Uh, number of damage control party consumables plus one. So we go from four fast damage control teams to five. Your repair party consumable action time goes up by plus 10%. And number of repair party consum uh, consumable charges goes from three to four. So this is actually really helpful, um, especially when you're looking at that action time. So then like, for example, this would go up to 11 seconds. Um, but then if we already had the uh, upgrade here, so 14 seconds, uh, then we'd be 15.4 uh, seconds. Uh, so that builds onto it nicely. Uh, here you would be 30.8 seconds uh, with that skill, having a longer lasting uh, repair party ticking for. So really, really good to have because a lot of times you are gonna be detected for the most part, but to get into those positions and disengage when you need to, um, it's still nice to have the concealment expert. Uh, which is probably what I'd recommend you go for next. Um, now there's two options here. You could go for the concealment uh, expert next, which as you can see is gonna drop our concealment down to 13.1 kilometers. Detectability by air and depths is 10.8 versus the 12 where it was before. Uh, so then this could be your 18 point commander. And then for 21 point commander, uh, you pick up the basic survivability. So your module restoration time is reduced by negative 15%. Fire extinguishing time, negative 15%. Flooding recovery time, negative 15%. Uh, or you could say, I wanna do my 17 point commander this way first. And then once I've reached a 21 point commander, I pick up a concealment uh, expert. So really it's up to you. Um, I'm probably gonna go this route and then pick up basics of survivability. Now in terms of other skills here on the ship, do I see a value for um, taking some of the other skills um, if I'm gonna be running this build? Um, no, not really, because this, uh, this is a very standard battleship build, um, or instead of the emergency repair specialist, you might see people take gun feeder on a typical battleship build. Sometimes the toss up will be between these two and even sometimes preventative maintenance, but for the Russian battleship line, like this is the, 
Um, very standard um, build. Most players run this in the game because um, it just really works for how the Russian battleships are designed and Wargaming has created them. Uh, so I do really recommend uh, that you just go this way. And I'm checking some other things here. Um, because one of the other things you could do if you're going to be super aggressive is that, for example, you could take the Gorse Quarters Combat. Uh, this reduces your main battery reload time, but you have to be within your secondary range, uh, which if you don't build into, it's only 7.3 kilometers uh, to extend that range out. So this really doesn't make sense uh, to do this. You do it more for your, you know, a Schlieffen, Massachusetts type of thing as an example. Um, so this is what I would run. If you have questions about this or questions about skill I didn't talk about, let me know in the comments and I can give you my thoughts. Um, but this is pretty tried and true build. Um, and the only other really change I would make here is taking the, f the damage control party modification one, because this would just be really good if you can be playing Sovetsky Soyuz a lot, or you have a <clears throat> plenty of coal and you just started grinding up the line. Do take this if you don't mind spending the coal. Otherwise, just keep those main turrets um, in action and going. So that is going to wrap up our video for today. I will be doing Kremlin soon. I do need to do another poll to see what ship in particular you guys might like for me to cover uh, this next coming Friday, Saturday. So I do try to do those polls um, here and there so I can make sure that I'm doing a ship that maybe you all really want to see. So if you liked uh, this content, if you like me doing these upgrading commander build videos, please let me know by giving me a thumbs up. Um, or even consider subscribing to the channel if you're not subscribed already as we are on our way. Um, slowly climbing up. I think uh, we're 1,340 subscribers, roughly. Uh, so getting to 1,400 subscribers would be really epic, as I still need to do something nice uh, for the 1,300 subscriber giveaway, as I've just been so busy <laughs> with life. Um, but I actually had this coming week off, so that's actually really sweet. So, um, so, I have all that to say. Until next time, take care. <laughs>